Okay, uh, let's try to start uh, uh, this community meeting, the first community meeting of 2021. Um, I am Arnau Monterde. I'm uh, one of the coordinators of the of the project and one of the co-founders of the of the CDIM. And I just want to just to say welcome to everyone to this session to explain you why we decide to um, to have again our community meetings and why it was a good moment to yeah to start to uh, to meet to discuss to to share ideas to to share uh, plans and to share the things that are happening around the the, the project and the platform. Um, this is just the 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 first community meeting meeting of 2021, but our plan is to have each month uh, as minimum one 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 meeting, one digital meeting. Uh, but also we're gonna have other uh, events here uh, in Barcelona, and we uh, invite also the international community to organize their own uh, events uh, to discuss about the topics that we are working on the on the project. Um, just uh, to say thank you to be here. Uh, we have uh, on the we have two hour session more or less and yeah and Carol uh, will explain you uh, after me why we are opening today this debate and how it's going to work the, the session. Uh, and uh, yes, after that, maybe we're going to have time to, to yes, to solve and discuss other uh, aspects. Thank you to be here and let's go with the, this first meeting. Carol, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thanks very much Arnau for the introduction and hello everyone and welcome. My name is Carol Romero. I'm part of the product team of the CDIM. And uh, before we start presenting the design proposals that we're going to see in this session today, uh, I wanted to give you briefly some context on how we got here and why we need to start rethinking the platform uh, interface, right? Um, so as most of you will know, uh, the CDIM was born uh, four years ago. And since then, we haven't stopped uh, developing and adding new features to the software. And this is part uh, intended because uh, we try to stay in a cycle of continuous improvement. And, but uh, I think it's worth uh, mentioning two important factors that affect this situation. The first one is that, as you know, the CDM is a community-driven project. And since uh, the platform is spreading happily all over the world and more and more, we are getting more and more contributions also from a lot of uh, different people. And the other key factor is that we don't have at the moment an in-house development and design team. Uh, we never had. Uh, and we expect to start having one finally this year, thanks to the Decidim Association. We just uh, signed an agreement just one month ago, and we expect to receive some funds, the first funds for the association that will allow us to hire some people. But you can imagine that with this combination of factors, uh, it's easy to have more and more inconsistencies uh, in the user interface because we don't have someone dedicated to have this global vision of the design of the platform, someone that can write a style guide for new contributors, someone to maintain even a design system. Uh, so, uh, until we have this stable team, we need to do our best with the resources we have, which are mainly the contracts uh, through the city of Barcelona. And we are expecting that by the end of the year, we'll be able, through one of these contracts, to start this redesign uh, process with a professional team, right? But uh, 
until we get there, we wanted to already explore some possibilities and also start the conversation with the whole community. So we contacted uh, Javier Usobiaga, who is uh, one of the senior designers who have been involved in the project uh, from the beginning as external collaborator. And we asked him the same question that we are asking ourselves today, which is, how do you envision a new design for the city? And of course, we needed to narrow down this question a little bit uh, because he didn't have the whole resources to rethink the whole platform. Uh, so we focused uh, in uh, some specific views of the platform that we know for sure that need some improvement. Okay, we need there are much more. Uh, but uh, I would ask you that during the session today, we all try to focus on the proposals we're going to see, just to try to have a more ordered conversation. And we will have, I promise, plenty of time to discuss uh, different aspects of the design of the platform. Uh, okay, I think I'm not forgetting uh, anything important. I'm going to let Javier now to present the design proposals. And when he finishes, uh, I'll explain briefly how we're going to work the dynamics uh, of uh, working in, in groups today. Okay, so Javier, if you are around here, whenever you want. Joining. Okay. So can you hear me well? Hope so. So let me see here. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, let's start. So hi everyone. Um, well, my name is Javier, and as Carol said, I'm I'm a senior. Uh, designer and front-end developer that have been in and out in in the design project more or less since the beginning. So I I haven't been working continuously in the project, but uh, I was there in the beginning. So maybe some of the problems that you are facing today with the platform are partially my fault. So sorry about that. Let's try to fix this. So as you can see, it's. I'm not calling this a redesign, but a Rylan proposal, and you will see why. Maybe it's starting point. So, as mentioned before, uh, well, the scene has has been developed by different teams in different projects during different stages, and it has grown wildly, exponentially. And some of the design solutions that we worked out in the beginning, they don't work anymore because the platform has changed, has new uh, meanings, and well, it needs to uh, rethink the, basically the user interface, how we plan, or this user experience, how we plan, how we, how we present uh, this, this platform to our users. So this is a proposal of how to start to fix this. So uh, I was hired to to do a small project, small a small design proposal, and this project followed these these steps. First, I created an interface inventory. This is take screenshots of lots of uh, elements of interface elements of the of different instances of Destiny. I will know I will not so, not show you. Uh, the whole interface inventory, just some highlights that I think are, are interesting. Uh, then, uh, together with the design board, we identified and analyzed the user interface problems. And we, choose, we chose some key pages and decided to restyle some of the interface elements. So this is not a proposal of the whole. Uh, uh, the same interface. This is a proposal for some of the elements, and might be uh, this might be a starting point of uh, something bigger. 
So finally, I built an HTML prototype to validate the proposal, and this is uh, where, where, where we are right now. So regarding the interface inventory, as I said, it's basically uh, scrolling for um, pages and pages of different uh, DCDM instances, differ different uh, DCDM installations, and finding elements uh, and how they are they are or ungroup them by categories and so as you can see there are some some buttons here different uh, button applications and even you will probably find some of them that are not exactly the the way they should be some of them uh get in the in the in the bottom area you will see uh a button that lacks some left padding and so on but it, it also it basically allows us to find uh, some inconsistencies some potential problems and so on so again these are some buttons there are also elements like the, the hero hero blocks and and banners and the team has a tendency to well, it basically have, has a design solution that is, that is is putting a text on top of images, and this gets a, gets a, a contrast problem usually. So we need dark backgrounds, and well, as you can see, it's complicated. And in the way it has evolved, it's probably time to to start rethinking some of these uh, elements because when when they get lots of text, it's going to be um, complicated to read, we can have some contrast issues and so on. Here's another example of uh, some some blocks, some some card types that they get the, the, ac the main action button on top of images, which is mm, problematic because it can have a lack of contrast or con of contrast depending on the on the background images or it can even uh, have some problems as you can see in this image the call to action is cutting the 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 eyes or the head of the main character in the in the bottom image so again there are some problems that will appear not with control designs but with uh different instances with different content and we need to uh think or rethink some of these elements in order to get uh, something that is uh, that that adapts better to um, different kinds of content. So one of the key uh, elements in in this in interface is the are the cards. So the cards is basically this this preview of, of a content that is going to be explained in another, another page. But this these cards, well, they get mm, a huge variation of content of information elements sometimes they have some uh, color codes borders and stuff that is not always uh, really clear what uh, what it means or what it exactly means and as you can see sometimes uh, cards get abused so cards are supposed to be a small a fraction of uh, of content mm, very light and informative and this particular case where we're seeing uh, cards used in to display frequently asked questions which is not an ideal format for for cards and as you can see well uh, there are cards and cards of different uh, types variations borders they sometimes get a border a top border, a color border. They sometimes don't. They sometimes get a label on the on the top border. Sometimes not. So the well, cars uh, have grown wild in the in the interface, and this is a a huge and an an important area to work to work on. We also have um, elements like the side side uh, information that is supposed to to display um, very quick or small or small uh, details. As you can see in the in the second column, we can see promoter group, the CDM team who participates. So this is this is a, a block that is supposed to be just 
a line of content and in the following uh, column we can see how this this uh, block has been abused in, uh, in the sense that we're displaying uh, too much content in a in a block that is not designed in this in this way so again we we keep facing some some problems and probably some indicators in the that we don't have the the, the right tools to display the the content in the way we want to to do it. Filters are also also an important an important part of the of the CDM. Uh, you might be um, familiar with the uh, side filters because they allow us to filter the results, the cards of the proposals, and everything. But these filters are usually an an advanced tool. Aim for for people who know who deeply know uh, the CDM, or so sometimes these filters are in the way in in getting a, a huge or important part of the of the screen. That means the real or the or the main content gets less uh, part of the screen, and they are not aimed to the to a common or regular user, but but a super user or, or advanced one. So this is another area that I will I will focus on uh, regarding the restyling. We can also see some some elements like the callouts. Uh, or alerts. They are they are supposed to be uh, small colored uh, rectangles that will explain a small message, a short message. Usually, uh, sometimes informative. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they they explain there's there's a problem or something like that. And we can find some cases where these these callouts, these these alerts, have been used to uh, well basically to, to add an introduction to a section that doesn't have an introduction and, and, and so on. So again, this is another another um, indicator that we need different tools to explain uh, our users how how the the well, the platform works. So um, some highlights of the of this uh, interface uh, in inventory interface inventory uh, area could be that uh, there's no a holistic approach to new designs and developments there's no user centered um, approach or at least a ux approach in in i mean uh, it's uh, some developments have been have been introducing new patterns and other developments um, again other new patterns and we we are we don't have a, a centralized language a centralized uh, or a unified patterns uh, interface so we also have a design library this is this is a module where we store the the design proposals design how to how to uh, use them and it's not it hasn't been updated in enough so it's difficult to get new developments and designs this, this is a different uh, problem that i'm not going to to approach but this is uh, a general problem of of the city we also have uh, an information hierarchy that is not optimized to improve the readability of the of the interface so what I mean is um, some content that is not really important might get in the or might be in a in a position where it shouldn't be like maybe the filters take too much space or there is too much information in cards and so on and and I think this is an important one cards shouldn't be the place where the user reads all the information but an invitation to read more. So cards sh should only uh, have the the minimum necessary information to explain the user what what they, what they are going to to find uh, if they click on that card. So uh, with all this in mind, there are some goals that uh, that I have had in goal. Well, the what I mean is the the main goals of this this proposal 
uh, where to focus on the main uh, user interface issues. That, that means it's, this is not solving everything. This is uh, trying to uh, solve or propose or start the solution of the biggest problems that I think we we found in in, in this research. Uh, it's obviously trying to simplify simplify interface elements so they become easier to to maintain, easier to to build in future developments. And also, and I think a really important one is this has to be easy to integrate. So we already have developments. We already have a lot of code. Uh, we can we cannot switch off all all of the uh, um, the CDM instances for a year, change them completely, and switch on. So this has somehow to live with the current uh, user interface and it has to be added progressively. So I'm um, going to explain uh, the restyling pro proposal. It's, it's a four-page proto HTML prototype that you can also access on this URL, but I think we'll, we'll send you the URL after this presentation, so don't worry. So I'm going to go back to my browser. Okay, so here I am. So this is, you. if you follow the link, you will see this page. This is the, this, the design app where we store the whole, um, all the, all the proposals and try to, to create an inventory of everything that happens in, in the CDM. So this block, it's called the D redesign. It's called it's called name D because all the all the elements have a, all the classes of the elements have a, a prefix with the D, so they can live with the older elements, so you, so it can be uh, integrated more easily. So I'm going to show you these four pages. First, I'm going to explain that in the Neo interface. Uh, Part of the of the proposal is to add uh, Fontosome free. Fontosome is a is a huge uh, icon library. It has a free option with seven uh, sixteen hundred uh, icons, solid icons, and it has also uh, this this part is is Creative Commons and it's, it's open source, and they also have a pro version. So so if you want. Um, uh, like the the light version or duotone version, or if you want to 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 um, uh, improve your your design installation, you could still pay uh, uh, an an upgrade and use the use the whole family. But still, the 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 free open source version is quite well. It has a lot of icons, which is an improvement uh, because we, we were using open iconic and open iconic hasn't been uh, updated in the in the past and it it doesn't have a lot of icons that i think uh, switching to a to a family like that is going to be a well it's going to to ease uh, future developments so again going back to this so you will see four pages all of them all four pages uh, are part of the same of the same um, uh, proposal. So here are the process cards, proposal initiative card, proposal initiative card with status. So as you can see, different variations, card with type, and so on. I'm going to explain this in a moment. But as you can see, there are so, some variations of the cards. We will see a proposal for filtering the results, then we will see what could be the uh, the landing page of a, of a process and a secondary page of the process. This is what I'm, what I'm going to explain. So um, again, this is these are the cards. Um, 
the main idea is to reduce the amount of the of information that 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 we are going to show in a card. So here, for example, is is a proposal a card. The whole card is clickable. So no more no more looking for the elements that are clickable or not. The the whole card is clickable, but it can also accept nested links. So if you have some links inside the, the card, it will work as, as expected. You we have a, a title, we have some metadata, only the metadata it, that is really relevant, like comments and supports, because it, it shows if the proposal air initiative or other has some activity, which is, might be interesting for the user. Um, a description, um, some tags, category tags, in case uh, they are necessary, and the published data, and that's basically it. So if, if I go back to the process card, we will see a version of the card that adds a picture and adds um, uh, some some dates, the starting date and the ending date, and also a variation with uh, with uh, an author in case we need it. So here's a, the same proposal initiative card, but with a status. As we saw, there are several cases where the where um, uh, a card, an initiative, a proposal, whatever, has been accepted, has been rejected, has had a problem, has changed the status. So we have the accepted, rejected, and basically uh, a free text if if needed and successful. So so it allows us to to explain to to quickly explain the status of a, of a card, a proposal, or equivalent. Here's the version with image. If we needed a version of, of uh, with image, it's it's better to to have the well. It's better. I think it's better to to have most of the cards, uh, most of the cards that will come from from the directly from the users with uh, without an image in order to to um, give some styling or, or some uh, meaningful styling. But sometimes you will need a proposal with image, like you are, I don't know, you are suggesting uh, or you are, you are um, uh, yeah, proposing something that it's basically a, based on an image. So, so therefore the image is relevant. So this is the variant of the, of the card with an image. If we needed, to, to explain uh, the type of card that, uh, that we are that we are displaying May, this might be might uh, might have some sense uh, when we are like making a whole search in the website and we will we will see proposals comments and uh, initiatives so when the the kind of content is mixed then we can add small text here uh being the user the kind of of card that, we, that it's, it's displaying so so if it's not clear enough we will add a title only there so um if again just for this ambiguation uh purposes we need to to explain the um the origin of the card and of the card so say this card this card uh, is part of a process in particular or something like that, we can use this content here, this title here, process, and a link to the original process. Again, this kind of information is only makes only sense if it makes sense. If not, let's remove it because, because uh, the less amount of information in a card, the easier it is to, to read. So I am, Card with a relative date of creation when when some some cards are recent recent a meetup card it's basically the same but it will have some um, some dates time and geo um, location a meetup card with author if it makes sense to display the author 
and some other cards like the initiative card that might be interesting to display the amount of signatures that get that got the initiative card and so on and a button in case uh, we really need to add a call to action to to a card okay so some most of the cards in this proposal they are links i mean the whole card is a link so you don't really need to to enforce a call to action or something like that but if you want for some reason to uh, display a clear call, call to action, like sign the initiative. We, we need you to sign the initiative, not only visit this card, then this is this this is the proposal to how how to display it. Okay, um, so filters. Uh, the proposal here is basically to make the hill, uh, make the filter something advanced. So they are not displayed in the left side anymore but in the top side and they are folded by default so we will have a, a search that allows us to quickly search we might have some filtering uh, tabs here like show me all the proposals the accepted proposals and so on and if we selected some of the this is not working because it's an HTML pro prototype with basic JavaScript. But the, the idea would be that if you select some areas, topics, and so on, they appear here. So we, we tip the user explaining that uh, they already uh, chose some, some of the filtering options and they are displayed here. And obviously ordering and so on. So this would be the, the filtering proposal, just displaying what is more relevant for the regular user, a search, and an order by, and hiding any advanced thing uh, in, a, well, in an advanced search here. Finally, I would like to explain the, the, the landing uh, page of the offer uh, process. So as you can see, it could be a process or other kind of element, but because we in in the scene we reduce a lot uh, this this kind of structures for for several elements. So um, first of all, we have an image, but this image so the, the text is out instead of being on top of the image. It's on a on a separate. Uh, white background dead box with all the information we might need. Also the navigation. Um, what else? So the site data like like uh, sharing and so on, we have a, uh, we could have some kind of menu. We could also have the embed men menus not developed here. The follow button. If we need to explain some more information, here it is. It would be a model for that. We keep this space for the most relevant information. Like if this is a process and there are some there are some phases. Uh, so uh, if if uh, like we are in the third phase third phase of the of nine or third step of nine steps. And we can explain this information here. And if this this step, this phase has uh, some, well, if it has a call to action, something like that, we can we can put it here. So we have a small description and a link to additional documentation and, and technical data. That is basically this link here. Um, now we have the uh proposals meetings and stats of them so there's there's a small redesign of the of this of the stats card too uh, using the the phantosome icons and what else um, oh yeah and if you click on technical data you will see now all this kind of data that as you might remember it required some more, some more space, some more information. So the technical data, 
uh, it's usually um, explaining uh, who's the who's the um, um, well who's behind this initiative um, and the uh, and the scope and, and stuff like that. So, uh, so we hide it here because hide it or we store it here because it's not the main information where we're using the the um, the landing page for the most important information for the for the regular user but any user that requires more data or requires uh, some analysis on, or transparency they can go to the technical data page and see what's going on we can also we also have the related documents here and any other blog that might be important to have but a uh, not important in, in a sense of, of the, the most important thing you should read before before continue. I don't know if it, if it made sense. I hope it did. So um, as you can see, there's some more um, room and space for the description and so on. I think I explained it enough. And just um, a regular problem, a regular problem of the of this uh, interface here or this navigation in particular is usually sometimes in some instances they get links and links and links and links so in order i'm going to just resize my screen and the whole idea is that in the moment that you don't have more room for the links the links get under a menu it's close to the to the menu we we have now it's just more responsive so it it even works for a mobile view so now um a mobile, the mobile view and the and the desktop view get get a, a closer, similar similar look that I think yeah, it improves the the interaction with this uh, particular page that has lots of information and and content. So again, I think I I talked a lot. So let me go back to this and let me finish with this. So um, this is just a starting point. This is not a closed design. This is not a, and it will be nothing without your feedback. So um, make sure that you will work now in different groups, and well, follow some some schedule, trying to um, analyze the proposed design and see uh, if it fits. What uh, if, if if it's uh, appropriate? So I'm just going to ask these questions myself. Then you can you, you can you can also follow obviously the, the schedule. So my questions for you would be: Are these problems the problems that I presented correctly identified in the in the uh, DCDM interface? Are these problems correctly addressed? So the the solutions that are being suggested. Are they uh, appropriate? What other use cases are not addressed in this proposal? Because uh, you you all have experience with with Decidim. Uh, you all have experience and have uh, have faced uh, different problems. So maybe there's something that is not is not here and should be here. Are there any other ways to solve these problems? This is not the this is not the only way. This is not the the um, the, solu the definitive solution. There might be others. So maybe we can address these problems in in other ways. And what other major areas or problems would you address next? Since we just uh, focused on on some cards, some filters, and a landing and a landing page. So that would be it. Thank you very much for listening. I hope it wasn't too hard. And um, thanks for coming, obviously.
Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much, Javi, for the presentation. As I already told you, uh, I think you did a fantastic job identifying some of the some important enhancements, uh, not only in terms of um, uh, the usability and the participants' experience, but also taking into account accessibility aspects, which are uh, very important as well. Okay, uh, now comes the funniest part. Uh, we're going to uh, split into different uh, groups randomly. You don't need to do anything. You will see a pop-up to join another room. Um, and, but some important things I need to mention. Uh, each group must choose a facilitator, okay, who will be in charge, will be the person who will be in charge of taking notes uh, of all the contributions of her group. We will pass uh, now for each group uh, sharing a path to take these notes. And in the path, you will find also uh, the link that uh, has already been shared in the chat, the link to the uh, design app. Uh, so you can review the different proposals. Maybe it would be a good idea to also have these um, final questions that uh, Javier mentioned. And uh, each group will have 30 minutes because um, unfortunately we're running a little bit out of time but I think we can get it uh, in 30 minutes. So when the time is over, the room will close automatically, okay? So we'll all return to this main room and each facilitator will uh, share the, the conclusions uh, of her group. And I think this is it. The only thing, uh, yeah, I need also to say that a note for each facilitator, as you know, we are recording this session uh, to have it afterwards. So just for you to know, to the people who will be presented, that they will be recorded when we come back to the main room. Okay, I think, uh, let me know if there is something that um, I didn't explain well. And if not, um, let's get to work. Thank you. Thanks, Javi, for sharing the questions. We're going to copy paste it in the pads. And I think uh, we'll start to see our rooms. Right. Okay, um, I hope you see me and that we are uh, all back to the main room. Um, I need some help here because I don't really know uh, who are the facilitators, only from my group. So. Uh, I'm going to start, I oh, know, sorry, uh, we have a numbered groups, right? So let's start with the group one. I'm sorry, I know this was a bit short of time, but we're going to, to get more practice uh, and, um, by mentioning the time. Okay, group one, who is the facilitator for this first group? Please. I am the facilitator. Ah, okay, Andres, please turn on no. your camera if you want. Yeah, yeah let me go. Oh. I think I am there, yeah. Hi, how are you all? Uh, so our team was uh, with uh, a little international. We, we had uh, people from from Japan, from uh, New York City, and also from from here, from from Catalonia and Portugal. And uh, yeah, th there were some comments regarding uh, the, that the responsive design is uh, really important because uh, more than half of the users are using smartphones in Japan. Uh, there were also a comment regarding that. Uh, we love the incremental approach and the thought given to upgrade the uh, process of existing instances. Uh, 
Yeah, the, there was uh, like uh, some mix in the experience that uh, some uh, we, some um, people didn't have, uh, at least uh, having uh, live instances. Um, finally, the one of the main um, critics that were at the current design and the new design is regarding the accessibility of the platform. That it's, it, yeah, there, there are some accessibility uh, issues at the moment, especially uh, regarding the use of uh, screen readers, and, and there were also uh, contrast issues. Um, and finally, we, we also talk about uh, all the sample contents uh, because it was uh, like difficult to to understand what the platform is is doing and and the new design, uh, especially yeah with the CDM that we had uh, lots of examples of real world uh, use cases that could be useful to to also add. And um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Andres. Uh, Pau was mentioning in the chat that maybe it's interesting if the facilitators uh, share their notes in the screen. I don't know if they can share the screen, uh, but if you can uh, uh, do it, please. So, next group. Uh, will be the second group. I believe this is mine. Uh, and I let Virgil to present uh, some of the remarks we have discussed whenever you want. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, okay. we hear you and see you. Perfect. Um, so we uh, on the on the question, so we think there the diagnosis uh, and the analysis was was really good. Made by uh, by uh, by the by Javier um, on the problems that uh, uh, we didn't see uh, that were addressed. Uh, there was a whole slide about buttons, but uh, we didn't see uh, a, stra a strategy to uh, maybe improve like the many many buttons that the team has and and give uh, a concrete uh, a concrete uh, use case for each of them. Um, use case that uh, we didn't think were addressed in the proposal. Uh, we think that the navigation uh, tab, uh, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the different levels of navigation in the CDM might need uh, some uh, some uh, some work because uh, they they are uh, sometimes not really well understood and it's a lot of navigation tabs. Uh, we think that maybe we should address also the map interface. Uh, that um, that has some problem in mobile and uh, and even in desktop uh, and uh, also generally uh, we hope that uh, we can work on the the mobile uh, information strategy currently like the whole all the information is shown uh, when uh, you resize to uh, mobile browsers and I think we should have a strategy to start hiding some stuff so that we have less information displayed on the screen when we look at it with a phone. Um, and then we did a little analysis on the, the, the four views that were rebuilt. Uh, there were many remarks on the process technical data. Uh, we are a bit afraid that, um, well, first, uh, we don't think we should add a new tab uh, for this, since we already have many tabs, uh, usually in the, in the, in the participatory spaces uh, navbar, so maybe, uh, Having a, a strategy where we show the, the information on the, presented, on the presentation page and maybe uh, use uh, foldable menus where we can put uh, the documents, uh, the steps, uh, things like that. Uh, we, we think it, uh, it could be a, a good improvement and, and, uh, and give the opportunity to users who just want to get to the point to, to start uh, to not be too lost when uh, seeing the page and the ones that are a lot more like power users to to kind of like get the information that they need. Um, uh, congrats on the filters. Uh, we all uh, think it's a very, very uh, super, uh, very good work and uh, very much needed. Um, on the cards, uh, there was a feedback 
that uh, uh, that uh, we might not know there is no buttons anymore on the card and uh, there was a feeling that uh, users might not know that something is hidden behind it for example a meeting might have a, a registration button an agenda or stuff like this and and it's cool that uh, now it's uh, the whole thing is clickable but uh, we are afraid that people might not uh, uh, feel like they need to click on it to get uh, the info. Um, and uh, and yes, the process origin, uh, there was a, um, one feedback that uh, we think that it could be the first, uh, the current implementation is better because it's displayed in a smaller and more clearer way. And, and yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it for us. Thank you for hosting the, the community meeting. It's, uh, it's really cool. Thank you, Virgil. Um, okay, let's continue with the third group. I don't know uh, who is the facilitator. Uh, if she or he can step up. Francesco, Hello, hi. How are you? Um, our group, I think, agreed with a lot of what we just heard around um, navigationally, uh, like the, the menu bars and what that could look like. Um, but I think just to go in order, um, the problems that were identified were certainly uh, issues. I think there was a little um, misalignment and expectations of, of what to expect coming into this meeting on the, the scope um but i think there is a, a more fundamental expectation of like guiding folks through the process which i think is rooted in how the navigational bars are set up um how the sub navigation bar in the process page directly inherits from what the components are and if um what it could look like to think about if the navigation bar within processes were organized differently um we also like, or I liked where the technical data previously was. It's something that I point out to um, cities who are using it that we're, no matter what process you land on, you'll have this space here to figure out what's happening in the space in a really quick glance. Um, filters also were just a really great improvement from what we saw. Um, and we like that you can click anywhere on the card to go into what's behind the card. And the process page header being cleaner is much good. Again, just because when you're at a process page, there are so many levels of, of uh, horizontal bars. You have the top bar with your name and search and log in, and then you have the main navigation bar, the process page with the steps right now, and then the sub navigation bar, it becomes a lot. So the fact that the process page header was cleaned up is really good. Um, I think some questions we have for cards is being able to add images to meetings. Um, I think we, I, I wrote this down and this might be a mistake, but I didn't see what voting would look like on cards, but I think I saw in other people's notes that the supports were just like grayed out and really hard to see. Um, so maybe that's worth looking into. Um, again, in the process page, the sub bar menu is not prominent enough um, and can lead to confusion on for citizens on what to do once they get to a process page. And we thought what it might look like to explore um, side menus and using hamburger menus to bring them in and bring them out. Some other major areas that we'd like to see addressed next is again, how participants are guided through the process on a more fundamental level on a process page. Um, when participants get to a landing page, it's not always clear what to do. Um, the main navigation menu of Desadim is often modified in practice. Um, so what it could look like on the back end to have more customization options for the main menu in Desadim, um, allowing images to be resized throughout the, the site. Um, one example is often the logo is too small on the homepage. Um, there's another really, there are some other really specific things like collaborative text work gets split up into many proposals, um, which leads to the landing page being cluttered with a lot of proposals from one collaborative text, potentially, uh, and then also being able to customize what shows up on the process landing page. That's what we had.
Thanks, uh, Francisco. Sorry, I'm being a little bit slow here. Okay, Pierre. Okay, you're ready. Let's go. Uh, hey, everyone. Yeah, I tried to, to anticipate. Uh, yeah, so pro group four with uh, Maite, Monica, Paul, and me. Uh, and we actually, we, we were a bit confused with the questions. Uh, so we actually went literally, we went through the designs again, and then we thought we're gonna put that back into the questions and then we didn't have time. So yeah, it's still a bit linear, but I think we, we really agree with what the other groups said about the problems being addressed and uh, or not being addressed, but some of the, Things we saw, for example, for the cards was that, uh, yes, some items got smaller and grayer, as Francisco said, like the number of supports, and maybe that's actually a really important formation. So we think it's it, maybe it's not too good to make it too small and too gray. Uh, one thing, especially that disappeared from the card is the, the, uh, the name of the offer. Now you just have a little like uh, round uh, image, and Paul was saying that it's really important for, for Decidim, for people to understand that the content of Decidim, there are people behind it, there are human beings, right? And that, that makes the whole uh, card a little bit less personified. Um, also, we saw that there is no CTA call to action button on a lot of the cards, except the initiative one where you can sign, and we think that's a shame because call to action buttons could have been even improved to, to lead people into doing even more uh, more actions to lead people to vote, to lead people to, to lead proposals. Um, Monica was saying that they use a lot the number of people following uh, a card or a process, uh, a proposal, and uh, that's a shame if this is not as visible anymore because for them it's really an indicator of uh, how much, how active a proposal or process is. So they really want to see it kept. Um, regarding the filters, same as the other groups, we're really glad with the redesign. I think if, especially the mobile version was a pain uh, on the Steam because the, the filter block that was on the left on the desktop usually ended up in a small filter button that everyone was missing. So we're really glad it's being split in different parts that you can have a search field that's always visible, that you can have an ordering uh, filter that's always visible. Um, uh, we think it's it's, it would be interesting to have some colors uh, for the filters because you, you're adding some small boxes uh, on all of the, like for every filter added for the area of the category. So it would be great if they could be colored so you can differentiate them. Um, yes, the process landing page, we also think there's some interesting uh, improvements with the banner in the behind. Um, but the main problems uh, we think with the landing page kind of remain, which is, for example, that the nav bar buttons are really not well identified. They're all in red and on the same line and quite close from each to each other. So it's really hard for users, I think, to identify what are the different things they can do. Uh, the timeline uh, block uh, was already really tiny on Decidim. And when you have a lot of steps in your process, it's really like this kind of like caterpillar that people don't really understand, I think. And so we were hoping to see it get bigger and it's not getting bigger, but instead it's getting lower. So it's even less visible. And as a, as a consequence, that means the call to action button that was already below the, the timeline is also getting lower. Uh, so I think, uh, and that was shared in the group that this button should get a much bigger space because when you want to get people to vote, you really want that button to be visible. And the first thing that people will see and click on. Um, and then you yeah, pro process technical data. I think same same uh, opinion as the others. It doesn't deserve an over tab, but also I think most users, most admins just fill in one, two of these uh, boxes. So what happens if they only fill one? Does that mean the whole thing deserves a, a whole tab just for one field? So I think the admins are gonna end up not using any of these fields to prevent that tab from appearing uh, because technical data, it's gonna confuse the user. Also just the name, I guess, technical data could refer to technical data. What if you're doing a process about the environment in your city? Maybe people are gonna understand technical data as technical data about the city environmental processes or something. So I think the name in itself is already an issue. Maybe metadata was actually a better name, but in itself, it's maybe not, not a good solution to have it as a tab at all. Uh, there are also questions. Uh, yeah, there were, in general, I think, uh, how do we make the process landing page clearer, more contrasted between uh, the text, the images, the timeline, the buttons? I think there's, there's, there's some improvement that could be made and that's some things we discussed. Um, yeah, and uh, 
the items that we didn't get to talk about because they they were not on the on the designs. Uh, so the maps, I think, yeah, great point, but the maps can be improved a lot. Uh, I would add also the forms that people fill in to either I don't know, like uh, uh, fill in a survey or write a proposal. So in general, there's lots of forms on this team could be improved in a lot of ways to make it more easier to add pictures, to uh, input a, a position on the map, uh, to make it more intuitive, like intuitive as well. If, if a proposal doesn't have enough characters or uh, doesn't have a capital letter, these are still things that are supposed to make the proposals quality better, but end up confusing the user. And I think they probably takes tiny improvements to make it less frustrating for the users who usually click and see their proposals rejected one over and over again or don't manage to attach an image or uh, so these are things that we'd, we'd like to discuss maybe a bit more even with smaller parts but they're really crucial parts because the users um yeah that's basically what they do when they come on the platform uh yes um yeah i think that was most most what we said Thank you, Pierre. Uh, okay, let's go with the last group, number five. The facilitator of this group. Hi. Okay, Veda, welcome. Hi. Um... Well, I get straight to the point. Um, okay, uh, first we want to congratulate you with um, how you redesigned the stats at the bottom of the process page. Um, it, they really stand out and uh, right now they're kind of a bit boring and they should like be more lively. Um, yeah, and and highlight that um, it's cool to distinguish somehow um, which type of, of card is each card since it's a very reused element. Um, there is a case where uh, you have like proposal uh, at the top of a card and yeah, well, it's really useful. Um, secondly, well, we follow the um, the questions that um, that you proposed. Uh, they're good questions. Um, okay, uh, we think um, that most of the, these issues you detected are uh, very correctly addressed. Um, we just have two notes, which are that. Um, uh, the process phases card that um, right now, currently, it, it is displayed in the process banner uh, at the top of the process page. Um, and now it has its own card in the process, in the page body. Um, and we, wa we were wondering if um, it should be visible in all the components of the process, including the technical data page, um, which is the the one we didn't see it in. Um, then we really like um, the action buttons and the progress bars in the initiatives card. And uh, well, I don't know if it's an initiatives card, but um, it would be really cool to use those call to action buttons more. Um, because it's it's an attractive feature um, in the cards that may capture users' attention and lead them to participate more. Um, okay, uh, and then we have a lot of mm, comments that um, maybe are not in scope, uh, but anyway, I will share them with you. Um, well, we... Um, as a developer, um, there is much to do, in our opinion, um, to improve the um, and make it easier for developers to customize styles for the CDM instances. Right now, there are some issues that lead to um, uh, lots of time wasted into just 
guessing uh, how a change will affect the overall uh, user interface, like uh, regarding colors and shapes and such. Um, so it would be uh, it would be cool to organize that. I think that's another point at the bottom, but um, but yeah, um, maybe focus on making uh, the code easier to customize. And, and improve um, UI and UX guidelines uh, so that um, when developers are making a new feature, they know exactly which graphic elements to use. Um, uh, because sometimes maybe they are choosing a card to display content that um, would be better in another kind of UI element. And and more importantly, like make my maintainers of the code aware of these guidelines so that they can request developers to follow them um, so that they can integrate the changes and and the CDM still has that consistency. Um, and yeah, there's another element uh, which was not addressed, um, which are the header and footer of the page. Um, but I think many people mentioned that already, uh, not the footer, but it, it's not um, really responsive in some cases and it would be cool to have maybe to make a few proposals of how it could be improved. Um, and yeah, um, then another way, well, um, Another proposal we have is that um, for cards that include, um, that can have images, um, that mm, somehow the users mm, may choose an icon instead of an image to represent what they are creating. Because mo there are lots of proposals which are can be really abstract and it's hard to find an image to represent them, but maybe um, with an icon, you could have like a better visual map seeing lots of cards and just like you you can already guess that uh, if a card has a, a tree, uh, an icon of a tree, it's relating to environment or climate or plants or whatever. Um, and yeah, it would aid like visual navigation um and other uh, areas and problems we would like to address next is rethink some ux journeys for instance um the journey of joining a meeting is is a bit confusing right now it's not very clear for some users what they have to do in order to join a meeting i think it's a a small button at the right of the page uh, it could be like highlighted so that it's easier and maybe more present like in meetings cards like make these kind of um, call to action buttons more present uh, in the rest of the site mm. yeah well uh, what i already said is that um, the um, the styles, the CSS code base could be more organized and documented. A big thing, another big, really big thing that I think is out of scope, but it's really important is that the admin could be restyled too. There's a lot of information, lots of fields that admins can fill in and they, it's not, it's not at all clear in most cases what content they are changing from from the page and and they have a really huge task um, all admins of the cdm i think uh, really put a lot of effort um, and they deserve <laughs> uh, that we improve their user experience their admin experience too and another element um, that um, was not addressed in these proposals is the conferences space 
that has some special components or pages, I don't know what I would call them, um, which are like the program. Uh, I think that is unique to the conferences space and, and it could be improved with uh, some filters too right now. I think uh, you can only filter per days, but um, that could be, there could be some other types of filters. And, and maybe also there put a, a button at the right of each meeting to join it directly. And, and yeah, those are our, our inputs, outputs. Um, I hope I communicated clear, clearly enough. Thank you. Great. Uh, you did it great, Vera. Thank you very much. Uh, OK, a lot of feedback to digest here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us uh, in this first uh, experiment about talking talking about the, the design. Um, uh, Javier and Arnau, if you want to join me for this final part, I just want to first mention because oops, if you can mute, uh, thanks. Uh, I just want to, um, because I didn't mention it uh, in the beginning, but I think it's worth also saying that alongside with this contract uh, of redesign, the general redesign of the CDIM, we are going to start also at the same time, finally, the development of the progressive web app uh, for the platform also by the end of the year. So we'll also have time to discuss about these mobile aspects that uh, you were mentioning. And yeah, I think uh, from the roadmap part, that's all by my side. And I let now Javier, if he wants to mention uh, something about the feedback received. Okay, I, I just want to say that uh, it's usually scary to present your work and say, please criticize it. But so 26 uh, an audience of international people, 20 uh, attendants was terrifying. But I'm really happy with the, the feed. You were all great, very constructive feedback. And as I as I stated, let's see what it works and let's improve the rest. So thank you very much for for being here. Okay, uh, I just to uh, just to uh, close the session, I will appreciate if anyone can switch on the camera and we can see uh, all the people who is in the meeting just to say hello and goodbye. But uh, I would like to say you that uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning, we're gonna have uh, more meetings like this during the following month. And we have a permanent space on Metadecidim and we expect that we continue all the all the discussions that we are having here in in <laughs> hey, the new gen the new generations are here too. Um, and yes we, we expect that we have to imagine how we can uh, follow the this model that we have in Decidim from the beginning this community driven model of development and how we can keep alive these conversations and on, on meta decidim and also um, as Carol said before uh, we are uh, from the from the city of Barcelona from Barcelona we are having we are imagining how we can uh, put more resources in the, in, in the project not just in in the um, in the progressive web app also in in uh, uh, investing on the redesign of 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 the CDM on the front end but also on the back end on the administration panel as as Vera was uh, was commenting this is a uh, uh, this is on the scope of the the future uh, public procurement that we are having here in 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 Barcelona 
uh, and just to announce that the the twenty second of April we're gonna have an, a specific uh, meeting. This is gonna be a physical and digital meeting. Uh, we are sorry because this meeting is going to be in, in, in Spanish, but it's going to be a specific meeting about the, the, the electronic voting system that we are developing on the CDM. And we are just on the, on the final steps uh, just to have a secure and encrypted system to vote on the CDM, which, uh, which are a very amazing moment of the, of the project. Uh, and we're gonna have a, a discussion around that uh, 22 of April at 11 in the morning. And uh, we're gonna uh, send you the, the, the next uh, yeah, the next uh, meetings. It has been a pleasure to have you here and to see you uh, here this first uh, yeah, first international uh, meeting and we invite you to give uh, feedback on the on the on the meeting on metadecidim in in how we can improve these meetings how we can yeah proceed in and to have better sessions as you know we are uh, imagine how we can integrate with other uh, open source technologies that improve also the the experience when we are collecting ideas and we are sharing uh, yes contents and ideas etc and yes, let's let's try and let's try to imagine how we're gonna uh, keep doing that. Thank you, and see you the next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.